So there's a reason Tommy Tedesco, the wrecking crew, said there ain't no money above the fifth fret. It's because if you can't play rhythm, nobody cares. Just because you can play like Steve Vai and rip amazing solos up and down the neck, if you don't have a good rhythm, you're not gonna get the job and your grandma isn't gonna want to hear you play uh, Eruption. 50,000 times, right? She wants to hear a song. So we're gonna look at three different basic patterns and a few little variations that can play you anything from just blues to rockabilly to even psychobilly. It's a very good roots-based thing. It's really great for a beginner because it only uses a couple of strings and it can start sounding like music really quickly. Let's pull in close here and we'll get started right away. All right, so we're gonna do all of these in A because like I said, it keeps it above the fifth fret and kind of keeps it in open position. I'll show you the patterns on up the neck. So if you wanna play it in a different key, like say G or something, but let's just start with A. We're gonna keep it simple, okay? So this first one is a really popular psychobilly and rock and roll. It's a really minor sounding uh, lick. Um, so we're starting with an A chord. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the A chord, and then we're gonna take our middle finger on the third fret of the A string, and we're gonna get that C, and it's gonna sound like this. And then you're gonna drop down one set of strings for a D. You're just gonna use the D string and the G string for this one, same thing. Back up to A. Then the E, same thing. Just think about that. A really good way to do this is get your metronome or get a backing track to play to, but it's when you get it up to full speed, it would sound like. resting that palm. I'm kind of palm muting these higher strings. I'm actually palm muting almost all the strings to give me that percussive. Now, you could do it, if you try to do it without touching anything, you get a. Which is great. Now you could do that like in choruses or when someone's playing a solo, you can kind of just open it up and. But let's say someone is singing, you're probably gonna to wanna to mute that. And it's it's all about touch with a rhythm, right? And then you're kind of a. Uh... Then when the solo kicks. So it's really about getting your right hand and kind of getting the rhythm, getting the feel, getting all of that figured out to where you're in the pocket. It, it, it's a thing that you have to just play along to things to learn, but just think of it this way, especially if you're just beginning, it's two, two, so that's a really good one. It's super early. It's in a ton of psychobilly songs. Um, Another variation, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna move through these pretty quick because what you really have to do is just sit down and play along with them. The, the fingerings aren't complex, right? So it's really about listening to it and getting that feel. So here's a variation on it. And what we're gonna do is when we hit the C on the second beat of that, we're gonna go to a C sharp. So you get. Now 
don't let that throw you. I'm literally doing the same rhythm I was doing for the first one. So I'll tell you what, I'll keep my right hand constant doing the same thing, just going. And I'll do both patterns. So here we go. See, your fingerings are kind of simple and even to change it up, it's kind of like talking. You can say hello a lot of different ways. So that's something to think about when you're playing some of these is you're using your left hand notes to add a little flavor, but the way you say the words is all in your right hand. <laughs> Super classic rock and roll, Chuck Berry, the blues, everything. So we're gonna keep on that same A instead of hitting that um, C. This time we're gonna take our middle finger. The open A is always gonna play like a drone, but then we're gonna hit this F sharp. You know you recognize that. set of strings for the D. The E. The A. Super classic, super blues, used in everything. Now, that one, especially if you're beginning, you're gonna have to stretch those fingers out a little bit more, right? Like a thing I like to try to do is one finger per fret, right? So if I'm doing the, if I'm making the bar for the A here, I wanna use my middle finger to hit that F sharp. So you just get this classic blues. And it's again, it's all about the rhythm. You choke up a little bit, palm you a little bit for the verses when someone's singing. And then when they go to the chorus, you might open it up, get a little louder. So it's really important to also think about where do I fit in the song? You know, you're probably not going to hit all these chords all together all the time, right? You're just, you find your little pocket and work on it there. Real easy. This is a great place to start. So here, let's do this again. I'm gonna go and do the first pattern. I'm not gonna change my right hand movement and then I'll do the second pattern and you'll see your right hand kind of still is doing the same thing. You're in the same rhythm, the same pocket. The only thing you're changing is how you're accenting it with your fingers. So. hand is not really doing much it's just and you'll do that for anything that you're doing you want to get your right hand rhythm down and then you can kind of add the little accents with your with your left hand um, so let's do a little variation on the the blues pattern the little Chuck Berry thing we just did where it's the same thing where we're just gonna go up half a step so we're gonna go from this F sharp up to a G, and so you get. It's the same way we were doing before. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Ah, actually, you know what? I was walking it down, so you could go. So it's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, 
Let's look at this as a walking bass line. Uh, really, we're just doing the same Chuck Berry rhythm, but we're adding an extra note in. So we're going. All right, so for the walking bass line, really, we're doing the same thing as the Chuck Berry. We're just adding a major third to that chord. And don't let the theory get in the way. Just kind of watch what I'm doing and think about it and learn it, and then you can go back and learn what the theory means. So we're going to be doing this. So instead of going, just so now we're just alternating between so the the A string at the fourth fret and the D string at the fourth fret. So you get. All right, I'm gonna switch back and forth between just the regular old rockabilly, Chuck Berry-esque uh, rhythm, and then I'm gonna add that walking bass line in it, and you'll see how they're very similar. Now my right hand, still doing the same thing every time. It's not changing. So, we ready? Here we go. That's it. So those how those are very similar. Now we're going to add in the G note there, kind of how we were doing that variation. So we're going to do it now. We're going to add that major third, and we'll walk down. Excuse me. We'll walk up, and then we'll walk back down. So I'm going to do it just straight up uh, rhythm, kind of in the Chuck Berry vein, and then we'll add that major third to get a walking. And here we go. it's the same with the other ones you just shift the string set down to get the D and to get the E right so it's now I'm gonna show you one more quick one where you're kind of hitting the root note it's the same thing to the G string at the second fret to grab that A. So think about that as well. So you would just go. Ooh, I messed that up. Here we go. So those are the patterns. And then it's all about your right hand. thinking about it so a bonus one there's a whole lesson that I did one of my first lessons on how to do the Carl Perkins rhythm uh, it fits in nicely with this uh, it's essentially the same thing as that first pattern where we're hitting the minor third but instead you go up instead of hitting this on the A on the third fret you're hitting the E string on the third fret which gives you kind of a dominant seven thing instead of get but the rhythm is all the same right so go check that video out if you want uh, it's a really good one so in closing let's think about this you've got the you've got that minor 
sounding thing that's kind of a psychobilly-esque type thing. You got the good old blues. And then you got your walking bass line. All right, so now I'm gonna run through all of them at the same time without stopping. I'm just gonna keep a consistent right hand moving. Your right hand is kind of everything. This hand is just giving you the accents and making a little bit of information, but the groove, the thing your grandma and the people in the crowd and the people who pay the money are gonna to wanna to listen to is how your right hand is going. So get a metronome and work on it, right? Um, what you want to do is just get that metronome, just get it going to where it's just, just choke up all the strings and make your hitting it. Make sure you're hitting it on time. So that. All right, I'm going. So you ready? Let's start with the first pattern. Variation. Chuck Berry. Variation. Let's walk it. So variation. Octave. So see? All of those still had the same rhythm. They all fit. You got to fit the rhythm and then you add the uh, decorations on here. So let's just run through those, keep working on them, grab a metronome, play along to backing tracks. Play along with people is a really great way, of course, but backing tracks, metronome, get that right hand going and then try these little patterns and see what you think, guys. All right, guys. Well, I hope that was useful. Uh, if you did find it useful and you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, do all the YouTube guide things below. That way I can keep this thing rolling. Uh, just remember, get a metronome, find some backing tracks or some old records. Just sit down with those and get that right hand going, right? There's a lot of positioning and stuff you can do. And we'll talk about palm muting and some of that another one but those basic rhythms will allow you to accompany people left and right play a ton of songs it's just a basic fundamental building block yeah everybody wants to play like brian setzer or steve Vai or insert guitar hero there but think about it 99 percent of the time when you're playing a song let's say it's a three minute song the solo lasts for 10 seconds the song's three minute so if where is your ROI? What's most important, right? So work on those. Maybe next we'll do some honky-tonk rhythm patterns and some things like that, but this will get you through a lot of roots, blues, rockabilly, some of those things. So uh, just remember, go slow. Take it in small chunks. If you get frustrated, take a break, okay? It's it's okay. It's, it's a guitar. It's a hobby. It's for fun. You're supposed to enjoy it. So and it's hard, so you're gonna mess up. It's gonna take some time to get those rhythms, to get those hands stretched and doing the things, so just stick with it. I promise you it's worth it, and learning these rhythms will allow you to play along to a lot of songs. So until next time, uh, keep playing, y'all.